The diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is still a clinical diagnosis, and what that means is the physician goes by the patient's history or story and the physical examination. And what we're looking for is the presence of slowness, stiffness, and tremor. We say we need to see at least two out of three of those to make the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. My favorite way of looking for slowness is to ask the patient to open the hand and take the index finger and thumb and open really big and really fast. And in Parkinson's disease, what we see is it'll become slower and smaller. And a lot of times it'll start off big and fast and then after a few repetitions it gets slower and smaller as well. And patients as part of this slowness may have decreased blink rate, decreased facial expression, an arm on one side may not swing while they walk. We also look for stiffness and to do that in the office what I do is I grab the person's hand and I say relax, relax, relax and I flex and extend and I'm trying to make a judgment as to how much resistance is when they're relaxed and if it's increased that may represent the rigidity or stiffness of Parkinson's disease. And the third cardinal sign is tremor. Now the tremor of Parkinson's disease, characteristic of Parkinson's disease, is a rest tremor and that occurs with a limit rest. So I have the patient put their arm in their lap, I ask them to count backward which stresses them a little bit and distracts them a little bit and we typically see a tremor that goes repeats about four to six times per second with the arm relaxed. That would be a classic rest tremor. But you may also see that same tremor with the arms outstretched. Technically that would be a postural tremor or a tremor with the arm in a position of postural maintenance. And you may see a similar tremor as someone moves the hand back and forth. But the characteristic tremor that we're looking for is a tremor with the arm at rest. So again we look for two out of three of those signs. And in addition, Parkinson's disease is an asymmetric disorder. It almost always starts on one side, and one side tends to be worse throughout the course of the disease. Now, there's another very important feature, and if I ask a resident or a student, I say, if I could only ask one question to be sure that the person has Parkinson's disease, what would it be? And the answer is, how did they respond to dopamine medication? And when I say dopamine medication, usually I'm talking about levodopa and a brand name of levodopa is cinnamon. And so what I'm looking for is, did the person's slowness and stiffness in particular improve with dopamine medication? And if it did, if it improved quite a bit, um, that usually is a very good sign that the correct diagnosis is Parkinson's disease. So that's typically how the diagnosis is made. Um, there's some things we need to be careful of. If a person is on certain medications, it could potentially cause a picture that looks like Parkinson's disease. In Parkinson's disease, individuals are losing their dopamine neurons, so dopamine in the brain is going down. If a person is on a medication that blocks dopamine in the brain, it can cause a similar picture. So patients who are on neuroleptics, which are on antipsychotic or anti-hallucination medications, can develop a picture that looks very similar to Parkinson's disease. And also, there are medications that are anti-nauseants that can block dopamine in the brain. So if patients are on these kinds of medications, we wouldn't want to make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. We would say it could be due to these medications. We'd have to reduce and discontinue these medications if feasible and see how the patient does without those medications before we'd make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease if we're just going to do it clinically. Now these days we have an additional tool and that's called a DAT scan, which is a dopamine brain scan. And when patients undergo this scan, they get injected with what's called a ligand, it's a little chemical molecule, into the vein, and it works its way up into the brain. And what it does is it attaches to the end of dopamine neurons, and when the patient gets the scan, we can actually see this ligand as it sits on the end of the dopamine neurons. And the scan, therefore, gives us an index of remaining dopamine neurons, and it tells us, are the number of remaining dopamine neurons essentially normal, or is it substantially reduced? And in Parkinson's disease and other disorders where individuals lose dopamine neurons, it's reduced in certain conditions. Normal individuals, individuals who don't have Parkinson's disease but might have other causes of tremor, like essential tremor, it would be normal. And in disorders where medication is causing a blockage of the dopamine that's made, that it would also be normal. So if someone's on a medication that might block dopamine and they have a clinical picture that looks like Parkinson's disease, a DAT scan might be very helpful. Well, what other medications or what other conditions might uh, cause a similar picture to Parkinson's disease? Well, there's essential tremor. Essential tremor tends to come with the arms outstretched.
tends to be symmetric from side to side. Patients tend to have a very high frequency or fast tremor. Usually we'll say that there is little or no stiffness or slowness. It's really just tremor. It tends to run in families. About 70% of the time there's a family history of a similar tremor. About 60% of the time individuals will know some temporary reduction with alcohol. The other set of conditions that look like Parkinson's disease initially are called atypical Parkinsonisms. Sometimes these are called Parkinson plus syndromes. And in these disorders, individuals are not only losing dopamine neurons, they're also losing the neurons that receive the dopamine. So one of the important things that happens here is doctors will place these patients on dopamine medications like levodopa, but the patients don't respond. The levodopa is converted to dopamine, but when it's put out into the brain, it's doesn't have anywhere to go. It can't stimulate the neurons that are receiving the dopamine, so there's just no effect. Now, in general, individuals with atypical Parkinsonism usually have little or no tremor. Usually, they're symmetric from side to side, and they tend to have balance and swallowing difficulties much sooner than in Parkinson's disease. In Parkinson's disease, individuals tend to get balance problems eight, nine, ten years out or beyond, in these atypical Parkinsonisms, balance is commonly affected between one and three years into the disorder, speech and swallowing again a few years into the disorder. So when we hear no tremor, symmetric from side to side, balance and swallowing are affected and it's not responding to dopamine medication, we think atypical Parkinsonism, and the technical name for these, there's two common ones, MSA, which is multiple system atrophy, and progressive supranuclear palsy, sometimes known as PSP. These are relatively difficult conditions to treat. If we do a DAT scan, they will show a loss of dopamine neurons, so the DAT scan doesn't differentiate Parkinson's disease from atypical Parkinsonism. It's really the clinical picture and response to medication. And so we have certain medications we use to try to get every ounce of benefit we can out of the medications in those disorders, but they definitely tend to be difficult to uh, treat. So that's how we approach diagnosis of Parkinson's disease and related disorders. Um, we try to make the diagnosis clinically. If the diagnosis is clear clinically, then we don't need to go on to DAT scan. But in certain cases where if we knew whether there was loss of dopamine neurons or not, that's when we think, would a DAT scan help? And if it would, we go ahead and get it.